So, you want to get into NYU. Let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Ingrid. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. Today, we are making a part two of my first video, which is how I got into NYU Tish. I got into NYU about two years ago, and fast forward to my life now, I am still pursuing acting, but I never went to NYU. I only just got in in my last year of high school. That didn't happen because of COVID, but this video is basically a more in depth a video for how to get in. I've auditioned three times for NYU. The first year I got in, the second year, it wasn't that great for me, I didn't get in. And this year, this last year, I did audition again. I didn't get in, but I think it was pretty close. So I know kind of what works for me and what doesn't, and I wanna share that with you guys. The program. Okay, first and foremost, everyone, please do your own due diligence. There is a whole website dedicated to the program outline. Check it out first before you start freaking out and having any questions and that sort of stuff. Moving on. Okay, so this is a university. You are going for a degree. That is important to note because I've auditioned for many schools and that is different than going to an acting conservatory because you're still getting a diploma or certificate but you don't have to take other courses like English to work towards that degree. NYU does require you to take other courses to complete that and they will explain that to you once you get to your audition. That's one of the first things that they say, but I want to let you know ahead of time that if this is what you want, then go for it. For me, it wasn't what I wanted. I've auditioned for other schools that have been kind of like NYU, um, a great acting program, but also very university focused. That wasn't for me, which is why I actually take acting classes. The cost of the program is on the website and it does increase by year. Oh my God, car, okay. This school is horrendously expensive. Just please make aware of that. Do not minimize the cost. It is very expensive. But if that was cool with you, it was cool with me. There is financial aid for international students. I'm from Canada, so I know that for sure. Grants and scholarships though, this is not like the movies where like someone gets into NYU or Juilliard or Harvard and they're like, oh yeah, I'm just like so good at school. Let me just get fully funded for the whole um, school year for all four years. I don't know if that's true for other schools, but for NYU Tisch acting, for international students, I believe there isn't a full, full school scholarship available. I don't even know if there's one to cover the full year, but there are a couple that you can apply for. It kind of sucks that a lot of them are for US residents, even like some specifically, or just for New York residents. That's just the way it is, so just make sure you have a plan. I just want to also add that there is a huge currency difference between um, the US dollar and where you're from to also just watch out for that. And please still do research on this. Don't just take my word for it. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't looked at any scholarships or fees or anything in a long time. Um, things might have changed. So make sure you do your research. It's the next day. I fell asleep. Um, I stopped recording. So we're just gonna pick up right where we left off the application. So if you want to learn about the basics of applying to NYU Tisch, there is a common app application and that is for the university, regardless of whatever program you apply to, everyone has to do that. And then there's a portfolio and an audition you have to prepare for. I talk about all of this in great detail in my first part. Just go scroll down, find the video, watch that first, and then come back here. I just want to note that I think the audition part is the strongest part of your application, but please still write great essays. So the first year I applied and I, when I got in, I was coming straight out of high school. I was very enthusiastic, goal oriented, and I had a lot of drive. I worked very hard on my essays and I also worked very hard on my audition and I think that combination helped me get in. The second year, I didn't work hard on either. I was kind of cocky and I lost my drive because of COVID and I was just not feeling it 
and I didn't get in. And I think I deserved that result because I didn't do that well in either of those parts. But this last year, even though I didn't get in, I was, I say I was fairly close because I applied to early decision one instead of early decision two. I want to be one of the first to know whether or not I got in. I was in that first round of people that they were seeing. My essays weren't that strong. I feel like if I wrote them a little better, then I probably could have gotten in because my audition went perfectly. Even in the ways that it wasn't perfect, it still went well and I felt like I succeeded as an actor and I showed my willingness to learn. From there, after my audition, and when I found my results a month later, I was actually moved into early decision two. So they moved me into the next group and they were gonna take a look at me with the second group of people. I think just our new generation of students are very strong and they're looking at videos like mine and they're just getting so much help because there's so much help out there. So um, yeah, I was kicked out and I did not get in this year, but that's okay. I was kind of playing with it a little bit. I had a lot of fun auditioning. I, I wasn't as focused to get into NYU. I just, I want to take my chances at it again. I'm sorry for going on such a long speech, but what I'm trying to say is that you should be strong in both components to get into NYU. And that may seem like common sense, but I really just want to stress that from what I know and my experiences. The most popular question I get asked is, should I apply to NYU? I feel like I don't have enough experience. My resume is not long, etc. What should I do? I do not want to be the person that dictates whether or not you apply to the school or not. But what I can say is that your audition is the strongest part of your artistic portfolio. That doesn't mean you should neglect the other stuff. Please still use the resume format that they give you and do a good job with that. But if it's not that long, you know, it's not that big of a deal to me at least and it never was for me because my resume wasn't that long i did you know I, I had some training outside of high school and i took acting classes in school and i did some plays but other than that like i didn't go to professional acting classes or anything like that and i didn't do plays on community stages where i got paid yeah no short films nothing like that if you just show that you are an actor who can grow that is the most important. And you still have some time before your audition. You might be watching this video in August and you still have a lot of time before your audition that might even be in January. So take that time to do like a two day workshop if you don't have time or within these couple of months, do like a two month acting class and go to one every single week. There are a lot online, there are seminars online. Just. Do, read some plays, read lots of plays, read scripts with your friends, stuff like that will at least give you some experience. And it's out there if you're willing to look for it. Honestly, I'm re-watching these videos as I film them and I, I don't look that good. I look tired right now and I'm actually going on a huge trip tomorrow. I'm leaving in less than, in like 12 hours, less than 12 hours, so. No, no, I have more than 12 hours. I can't do math right now. Yeah, I'm tired. I just woke up from a nap, as you can see. But I'm doing this for you guys. We're gonna pull through for the rest of the video looking like this. Okay, bettering your chances. Find a monologue that you can connect with personally. This is important. Just don't, don't do a monologue just because you saw someone else do and you're like, oh, that's great. I kind of want to do it like that. You have to personally personally connect to that and if you don't it is very noticeable actually because they will ask you about your monologue as well they might they might not but if they do it's a lot easier to answer that kind of stuff when it comes from the heart number two read your plays i cannot stress this enough when people ask me what else can i do i always say read your play you need context you can also always just go ask an acting coach there are lots probably in your area and if you search one up online I'm sure you know it might cost you a little bit but they're always willing to help where to find your monologues a lot of people ask me this question 
honestly i always just search up on google i don't remember the exact websites i use every single year there are a lot of websites that carry plays and monologues i like to look for plays and then find monologues within the play that i like and i also like to use the website performer stuff that has a lot of shakespeare on there and then i like to use an, i think it's called new plays exchange that has new plays so that's a very good one for if you're looking for a contemporary monologue also please do not write your own monologues some people have asked me this the guidelines are on the website please just take a look they have to be from published plays practicing practice 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 first i just want to say Thank you so much for supporting me. I think it reached a lot of people. A lot of people DM me and I don't always have the time to reply to everyone. I try my best though. So I'm glad this is helping a lot of international students because when I made that video, I made it because there weren't that many videos about how to get into NYU Tisch for an international student. And my next gift to you are tips from Ingrid. So I have a couple tips. Um, I would say first know your stuff Okay, that is the biggest tip I can give you know your play read the whole play know your character Know your setting all the basics once you figure that out It's gonna be so much easier to even just learn your lines because you know who you are and how you your character responds to things another thing I like to do is I like to write a diary entry from my character's perspective and that kind of helps me see how this my, how I, my character, thinks um, in reaction to things that would happen to Ingrid in real life. So like if I, Ingrid, missed the bus, how would my character write about that? Is this making her mad, sad, like what's going on in her life? And that kind of gives you perspective on who this person is as a real human being. My last tip is that I always like to read my scripts out loud in different settings, I guess. Like if I'm having tea with the queen or if my dog just died. This is kind of one of those basic things that almost everyone does for auditions. But if you don't know about it yet, then you should try it because that kind of helps you learn your lines and you're able to change direction so you're not stuck in one way. And that helps a lot because the director or a teacher that you will be professor that you will be interviewing with might ask you to do it a different way and so this will help you with that okay i tried to answer as much as what was left over from the last video i'm sorry it took so long i know i said a part two was coming for a while now and it didn't but this is still in time for your auditions and applications right so hopefully that helps Anyways, thank you so much for the support. Again, I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up, like it, subscribe. And if you still have questions, feel free to reach out. I will try my best to answer those for you. All right, thank you. And also I do vlogs now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna vlog my trip. So yeah, can you like, can you guys like watch those please? Bye.